Welcome to Dog 101. This presentation will cover basic shelter dog interaction and ways you can help dogs get adopted. Your number one objective is to get dogs adopted. To do this, you'll need some basic information on how the shelter dog's experience can affect both them and you, and how to keep dogs healthy and happy and on their way to their new families. Adoption is the main goal. When dogs are adopted quickly, they can begin their new lives happier and healthier and of course they also open up a space for another dog in need. What do the dogs in your life do when you change up their routine, leave them with a dog sitter, or you have a whole bunch of new people over? They may get overly excited, or they may hide, pace, pant, or start destroying things. In a shelter, we have changed the dog's entire environment. Routine, smells, sounds, people. The stress this causes can manifest in longer term distress like depression or aggression behaviors that don't tend to appeal to adopters like barrier reactivity, and just like us, it can actually cause them to get sick. Now, when you're feeling extremely stressed out, are you typically eager to meet new people and make new friends? Are you on your sweetest, best behavior? The same can be true for shelter dogs. When you interact, please keep in mind that the dogs are under stress, and they do not know you yet. Another thing to keep in mind with shelter dogs is that a lack of stability in their lives can make them a little less confident and able to focus when learning. But all dogs need to learn some basic manners, especially if they're auditioning for a new family. You can help them by making learning fun, ignoring poor behaviors, and rewarding good behaviors, and catching them in the act of being calm, cooperative, and friendly, and rewarding that behavior. In keeping dogs healthy, the number one priority is safety. We use a kennel signage system that includes a wide variety of information. Any signs hanging on the kennels will inform how you interact with that dog. The first sign you'll see is a three color dot system at the bottom of this chart. If you see a green dot on the upper right hand corner of the kennel card, you'll know that dog has been evaluated as appropriate for beginner volunteers. These are the first dogs you'll walk, starting with a partner, so two people for one dog, and then walking independently when you feel ready. Help us teach these dogs good, adoptable manners by turning away and ignoring them if they jump up on you, then immediately praising or offering a treat when they have all four paws on the floor. The next group of dogs you'll see will have yellow dots on their kennel cards. We recommend that you complete advanced canine classes like Dog 201, Advanced Shelter Dog Handling, and Shy and Fearful Canine before walking these dogs. Just like when you start out with green dot dogs, you'll walk your first yellow dot dogs with a partner. Once you feel comfortable, you can walk them independently. What you should expect from a yellow dot dog is a little more skill needed from you on how to redirect hard leash pulling, playful, excited mouthiness or jumping, or perhaps nervous or shut down behaviors. These are all covered in the advanced classes. Orange dot dogs are typically staff only, but we do love to train the right volunteers to handle these dogs. Orange dot dogs need all the love, if not more than your green and yellow, but they require a higher skill level to redirect some more intense behaviors like barrier aggression, high drives and arousal, and any child restrictions. Let's start moving through some of the signs you'll see on kennels. Starting with the upper left, you'll see signs indicating types of holds on dogs. On the adoption floor, the most common ones you'll see are for post-operative healing with spay and neuter surgeries being the most common reason for this, and dogs infected with heartworm and undergoing treatment. For both of these types of dogs, you'll need to ensure they receive short leash walks only, as strenuous exercise can be very dangerous. Of the signs on the right, the most common one you'll see on the adoption floor is the box with the arrow pointing in and out. These dogs get really worked up when they pass other dogs in the shelter, so you need to get them in and out as quickly and calmly as possible, holding them on a short leash right next to you. Most of these dogs calm right down once they're out of the kennel rooms or outdoors, but any lingering in front of other dogs can get them even more upset. Of the signs on the bottom of the chart, you'll commonly see dogs with dental post-op signs indicating soft food only and no hard treats or toys until they're healed, go slow signs for more nervous dogs, and the occasional dog who can only have durable toys and bedding to prevent them from swallowing pieces. You may also see on orange dot dogs approved handlers only signs, indicating that these dogs have specific protocols to help them be successful, and any handlers need to be trained on those procedures. Puppies under five months of age are not walked on the floor or the ground outside. 
their immune systems are still developing, which is why they continue to get booster shots. We aren't worried so much about puppies getting exercise and socialization because they're typically adopted within 48 hours, if not closer to 48 minutes sometimes. Older puppies are exercised in designated areas only that we can sanitize often. When you're getting dogs out, keep in mind that the dogs will be excited and possibly frustrated. They may be jumpy or barky or a little uncooperative. You can reduce this by keeping dogs far enough apart, including from play yard fences, that they don't egg each other on. Until you've taken the dog to dog introductions class and been approved to do introductions, you may only walk dogs together if those dogs are housed in the same kennel. The excitement and frustration in a kennel environment is not a great time to make new friends. Another important piece of keeping the dogs healthy is sanitation and illness. As we talked about, heartworm positive dogs are special cases as they are being treated for a parasite that actually lives within the heart and lungs. If you have dogs at home, you know that in this part of the country, veterinarians recommend dogs be given a monthly heartworm preventative, typically a pill or topical application, year round. Heartworm is spread through mosquito bites directly into the bloodstream, so while we're not worried about it being contagious in the play yards, we cannot let dogs loose to play. An increase in their heart rate can cause a heart attack, which can be fatal. The treatment is given over several months, so you may notice dogs with one or two patches of hair shaved off on their lower backs where the treatment was injected. And because the treatment takes several months, we want to be clear to adopters that they can take the dog home today and keep the dog's appointments to come back to our facilities to complete treatment. What do you think the number one way dogs get sick in a shelter environment is? That's right, it's us. When working with dogs, we often take germs from sick dogs and spread them around to other dogs. Always wash or sanitize your hands between dogs, especially before touching puppies. Ideally, you'll interact with puppies in their kennel before touching any other dogs in the shelter, and then not again until you've washed your leash and clothes at the end of the day. What kinds of germs are you worried about spreading? The most common illness being treated is an upper respiratory infection, which looks and acts very much like a common cold in humans. Runny nose, coughing, watery eyes, and congestion. Look for a URI on the condition part of the med card in the lower right hand corner. We're also concerned about spreading disease through fecal matter, so all poop must be picked up immediately. If you see any signs that a dog should get veterinary attention, please give as much detail as possible directly to a staff member so that they can submit a medical exam request. Please do not leave notes as these can get lost or overlooked. Medical exam requests are addressed by vet staff within 24 hours. And again, puppies require special consideration and protection. Under five months must be carried. And of course, we keep our dogs healthy by fulfilling their basic needs for clean, comfortable places to stay, toys to play with, and clean water to drink. We also use this as an opportunity to show off our dogs. Have you ever heard that black dogs are not adopted as quickly? Historically, animal shelters have been very dimly lit places with small cages. Solid black dogs would disappear into the darkness. Now we use larger, brightly colored kennels, and we use colorful or themed toys and bedding to catch an adopter's eye. As humans, we are hardwired to connect with faces. We're so facially oriented that newborn babies recognize and stare at representations of faces, as well as faces in real life. So let's help make sure that each dog's new human family feels compelled to stop for an extra few seconds in front of the kennel and then really see who's inside. They may make a connection that could last a lifetime. The other half of our work is keeping dogs happy. One of your main jobs as a dog hero is to socialize with the dogs. What does that mean? It means to spend time with the dogs, interacting, being a friend, connecting, and teaching them that humans bring good things and good feelings and probably also really good treats. It also means encouraging social behavior. Reward them with praise, play, or cookies when they're calm, friendly, affectionate, outgoing. Dogs speak to us in their own language, but it's one we have a lot in common with naturally and one we can learn much more about. It's body language. Some of the things you might see a dog say with his body are that he's excited or feeling shy or maybe playful. The first one we'll talk about is one we see often in a shelter environment, arousal. 
Arousal can happen for lots of reasons. Excitement, frustration, fear, overstimulation, triggered prey drive. You can imagine how often those feelings come up when you're at the shelter. What do you notice about this German Shepherd's back? Her hackles are raised. The fur on her back is standing up. Hackles can happen for lots of reasons too. It simply means the dog is having a strong emotional response. Have you ever gotten goosebumps when you heard your favorite song or saw a video of a brave dog who saved his family from a burning building? It's actually the exact same reaction on dogs. Hackles do not always mean aggression. Arousal can lead to mouthing and jumping when you interact with the dog. Please help us ignore the bad and reward the good by turning your back with arms crossed when the dog jumps up on you and only leashing, talking to, or even touching the dog when all four paws are on the floor. If the dog is mouthing you or the leash, distract the dog with a toy or treat. Many dogs will gladly carry a toy in their mouths all the way outside rather than keep trying to grab the leash or your sleeve. You might see dogs displaying signs of submission if they're feeling nervous, shy, not very confident, or intimidated. These dogs are telling you, I am not a threat, please don't hurt me. You'll want to go slowly and gently with these dogs, getting down on their level and avoiding eye contact until they're comfortable. You also don't want to be too quick to pet these dogs. And when you do pet, under the chin and on the chest are the safest places. These dogs usually perk up once they're outdoors and away from the noise of the other dogs or crowds. Here's one we hope you'll see a lot. These dogs are inviting play. If they start to get too rambunctious, however, slow the game down or redirect them with a toy or a treat. This is our goal. We want the dogs to feel relaxed, confident, and comfortable approaching new people. When we see this body language, we know our work is rewarded, and we want to lavish these dogs with attention to reinforce how awesome things are when they're relaxed. I'm sure you've imagined during this presentation what it would be like to be a shelter dog, living in a small space away from anything or anyone familiar, where the food is different, you have a new doctor and caregivers, and you're constantly seeing others walk by your tiny room. With these things in mind, make sure you get a dog out of the kennel in as calm and sensitive a manner as you can. Decide which dogs you're going to walk based on the color dots and the signs on the kennel. For example, a green dot dog is a go, a puppy under five months is a no. Ask the dog how they're feeling and if they'd like to come hang out with you. They'll answer you with their body language. And it's okay if the dog says they'd rather not interact at the moment. Choose a different dog who would love to be your friend. For the large dog runs, enter the kennel and close the door behind you before attempting to leash the dog so that you can focus fully on the dog and not on holding the door while trying to lasso a moving target. When you exit the room, walk by as few kennels as possible and keep the dog on a short leash right next to you. They don't need all six feet of leash until they're out and away from everyone else and clear of any corners to turn that you can't see around. These are all things you'll practice with your mentor, and your mentor will also go over the details that are specific to your campus. Three things to keep in mind when you're getting dogs out of the kennel are to keep dogs separate while walking, so that means far enough apart that they're not getting excited or upset. Always clean up after your dog. Poop goes in the trash dumpsters. And be sure to treat, praise, or celebrate any positive behaviors the dog demonstrates. The three main ways we interact with dogs outside the kennel are walks, time in the play yards, and relaxation. No matter what, we want to ensure that the dog has a chance to go potty and they've received both physical and mental stimulation. When you're on a walk, you'll want it to be about 10 to 15 minutes long. Walks may need to be shorter or longer depending on the dog, the weather, and the schedule that day. You can hang out on benches outside or inside. Just be sure you're conscious of the foot traffic and anyone who may approach your dog. When you're finished, be sure to take the dog back the same way you got her out. Short leash right next to you so she doesn't turn any corners before you know what's on the other side. Enter the runs or suites before unleashing and ensure the dog has everything she needs in her kennel before moving on to the next dog. If you'd like to use a play yard, please be sure to check for any restrictions on the dog and then go out into the play yard without the dog to be sure there isn't someone already in the yard. Some dogs like to hang out in the corners or spots you can't easily see from the door. 
physically go out and look all around to be triple sure the coast is clear. Keep the dog on the leash in the yard for a minute or two while you play to minimize any overexcitement at the fence. If there are a couple of dogs in the yard already, check with staff before you enter to play with them. And remember, until you've completed dog-to-dog -dog introductions and been approved, please do not attempt to introduce dogs. Make sure your dog also has a chance to relax outside the kennel. This is a crucial skill, both for living in the shelter, where there's almost always something going on, and one's home, where they'll be expected to chill out as a member of the family. Can you imagine being a dog who isn't used to relaxing and is constantly feeling pretty tightly wound? You're so excited to go home with your new mom and you get to play all Friday evening, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday. Jackpot! Then, come Monday morning, you're suddenly left to your own devices. Uh-oh. For the dog who's comfortable with downtime, it'll be a lot easier when they may need to be home alone while mom or dad or is at work or school. Lastly, enrichment is what we do to keep the level of boredom and frustration down while dogs are in their kennels. Toys in the kennel are a basic need. In addition, your mentor can provide an information sheet with instructions on how to prepare some more activities. Every day, staff and volunteers stuff Kong toys with peanut butter, make and freeze treat popsicles, and more. The quiet game is one anyone can do. Grab a handful of high-value yummy treats and slide them under the kennel doors of only dogs who are quiet. Make a couple rounds of the same room until most of the noisy dogs have caught on. You can up the ante by asking each dog to sit if they know it. Hide and seek is another easy one. You'll use peanut butter to glue treats to the kennel walls, floor, and other surfaces while the dog is shut down on the other side or out for a walk. Let them find all the yummy treats when they get back.